Now we are going to discuss much about what we need to know when it is come to using this particular device. Well, let's start by discussing about the desktop system. It comes with the components related very close to that of the laptop. In this case, you can see HDMI here, HDMI port in this desktop. And we also have over here, you can see we have the LAN where we can plug our LAN cable in. And we have several USBs, as you can see over here. We have so many USBs, we have six USB that one can use at any point in time. So now let's go in and understand what components we have inside. So do that, I'm going to unscrew it here. After unscrewing it, I will just need to open, open it as simple as that. Drawing this place out, it's now ready to open. Over here contains the components that made our PCPU. So let's start by discussing them one after the other. If you could cite from here, this is where we have the fan. This fan actually work with the processor. The processor underneath is actually what we refer to as the CPU. So the CPU is actually not this big, big box. No, 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 no. It's actually that little brain underneath. Well, it's obvious why many persons may refer to as CPU because that is the best they may understand. To others who may even understand that the CPU is just central processing unit, but they just assume after roll is inside there very well but in this tutorial you must understand that the real cpu we are talking of are the little chip inside your computer what we have here this is the hard disk drive so most of the desktop actually use this size of the hard disk drive although some nowadays uses the ones that looks much like the laptops and alike but most others uses this and this is where you have the cables but the power cable and the other cable goes in this is where your informations are kept it refers to our secondary storage device understanding how this work is very important when not protected against physical damage or virus it could destroy this device but when well protected, it could be very useful. Even when it is faulty, we can actually repair it and put it back to use. Over here, the flat board we have, or we have here, it refers to as motherboard, the motherboard. So this is refers to as the motherboard. Down here is where we have the power pack. The power pack can be seen here that means this is where power comes in and out of the computer so if it have a power related issue it is obvious that we have to check this area to make sure that we fix what we have here the little round things you have there it refers to as simon's battery simon's battery the simon's battery actually keep time and date of your computer so it is important that you make sure that it is working fine when it has stopped working you will notice that your computer time will be late even though you fix it several so when that happens it's advisable that that device is replaced in order to give you a better service just like the laptop we also have the dvd drive if you have followed our last tutorial on engineering you will have seen that the laptop do have a DVD drive. So the desktop too, all full comes with the DVD. You can see it here at the front. You can see it at the front. Well, let me go ahead and power it so that we could open a DVD drive and see it. All right, all right, all right. So you can see the drive now. Okay. So this way you can fix your DVD and after which you slot it in. 
Now there's some desktop that come with a good processor, just like this one. So you may need to consult your engineer or your technician to tell you which one will best for you, based on what you want to do, and which capacity will be good enough for you, including the RAM size. If you have followed our last tutorial on laptop, you realize that we showed you a device called RAM. This is a desktop RAM. When you are working on a computer, it's actually the device that has your work temporarily. So it's advisable that you make sure that you save your work at all time in order not to lose them because this is temporary storage device. RAM is a preparation for random access memory. So when you save it, it goes from here down to the HDD or earlier I mentioned the hard disk drive. You used to remember the device. So when you are working, it you are working with this. But when you save, it goes in here to the secondary storage device, which is actually stored in a magnetic format. And the method to which it used is actually computer language. So what is computer language? Watch out for our next tutorial as we'll discuss this step by step and actually simplify it to the best way possible to understand the language computer do understand and so on. Well, with my experience of 18 years into this field of engineering, it has been very rewarding and it has been so fun at times listening to some of the students as they express what they understand about computer language and many other topics. I will bring their experiences to bear in our next tutorial. For example, some of them refers to computer language as English. Some say no, it should be Spanish. But we are going to simplify all this in our next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, smash that subscribe button and like and share this video. And we will hope to see you in our next tutorial. We sign out. Thank you.